So James is interested in poppy pods, is he? I think he's got some explaining to do. Questions, if you don't mind. Recognize this at all? Yeah, he fixed my laptop. Does he live locally? I think so. Seen this before. Don't think so. What can you tell me about several boxes of dried poppy pods in the greenhouse back there? Feel free to take some if you want. What are they for, James? Decoration? Why? Decoration. It's a big market for them among the over 70s. So what are you doing with them? Selling them to grannies. Okay, James, let's just cut to the chase. Are you extracting opium from them? Me? I can honestly say I've never done anything like that, Inspector. Sure about that. Scout's honour. And who was the guy delivering them? A friend. Someone gave them to him. He asked me if I wanted them. I said I'd have a look and see if I liked them. You just thought you'd have a look? No particular reason? I'm a plant scientist, that's what I do. Have you ever sold them to anyone else? I only got them a few minutes ago. In the past. You know Kate's body had opium in the blood when it was found? No, no, I didn't. Hey, hey, that's nothing to do with me. Let's hope not. Thank you. <sighs> Probably be back later. A few more questions, if you don't mind. Can you tell me about the room with the mirrors at Atlas? The one with the combination lock? How did you get in there? I was given the code for the combination. By Ryan? Well, nobody else is uh, allowed to know the code, are they? And not in theory. So how is the room used on the course, then? It's a meditation room where the students can reflect on themselves, literally. And what about the CD? Well, that helps, too. It's part of the programme. So you send the students into the room, they put the CD on, they stare into the mirrors. And how long does this last for? Until the CD finishes or they fall asleep. What else would you like to know? What do you know about poppy pods? Poppy pod? Ever come across anyone selling them, using them? No. Ah, uh, that's all for the moment. Thank you. Questions, if that's okay. Do you know anything about a locked room at Atlas with mirrors in it? Not off the top of my head, no. I think that's a question for Ryan. 
What do you know about poppy pods? Go on. Ever come across anyone trying to sell them or anything like that? Maybe even in here? And <sighs> Not that I remember. Be back later on, if that's okay. A few more questions, please. Thank you. Odd question, but have you ever seen anyone handling dried poppy pods? Poppy pods? As in, for opium? No. Though, James did have opium tea once, I think. Where did he get it from? Oh, I don't know. I didn't ask. James does his own thing. What does opium tea taste like? I don't know. I didn't try it. Really? I didn't want to risk it, did I? But I went to hospital once. Uh, I, I had codeine and I went into anaphylactic shock. The doctor said it was um, an opium derivative, apparently, so... Aha! You and Kate took morphine in the mirror room. That's what you said, isn't it? Yeah. But you're allergic to opiates, Simon. Opium! You didn't take the morphine at all, did you? Well, no. No, I didn't. Kate did, though. I thought you were trying to outdo each other. That was the point, wasn't it? But we weren't trying to outdo each other as such. Go on. <sighs> Ryan wanted me to test Kate. To see how far she would go to be prime candidate. What candidate? Prime candidate. It, it means the best person in the group, basically. What do you mean, test her? But you do it in pairs. One person's the tester, it's me. And the other person's the... Victim. Well, it's not like that. It's completely consensual. It's just boundary testing. Ryan wanted me to test Kate. Because they thought she was the best student. Well, maybe. I... I don't know. I just did what I was told, okay? Except you decided to give her morphine. To break the law. Well, I can't change that now, can I? She didn't die of a morphine overdose, did she? She died because she drowned. But she drowned for reasons that aren't clear. Atlas seemed to have this all neatly worked out. If Simon's telling the truth, Atlas are lighting the fuse and then retiring to a safe distance, letting students test themselves and push themselves to their limits while avoiding all comeback. Is this what happened to Kate? OK, that's it for now. Thank you. Ask you a couple more things, please. Do you know about the mirror room at Atlas? Mirror room? Um, no, I, I heard about it, but I think it was only for the students that were on the course. Something like that. Strange question. Have you ever known of anyone selling dried poppy pods? Poppy pods? Um. I don't think so. Isn't that opium? Kind of. It's okay. Do you know what a prime candidate is at Atlas? Yes, it's um, what every student wants to be. It's the best student. Apparently you get a great high-paid job afterwards. I don't think that really happens, though. Did you know anyone in the running to be prime candidate? What, like Simon? <laughs> I don't think they bit Simon, to be honest. Well, he's got too many morals, and you can't have both at Atlas. Thank you. Probably be back later.
Just a few more questions, if you don't mind. What are prime candidates? The best of the bunch. The peaches. And so what does it mean to be a prime candidate? Success. We have a special relationship with many major international companies. We provide them with our best students. And they get an instant job. And what do you get out of it? Well, it's a little kickback. Just business, Inspector. Thank you. Probably be back later. Ask about a few more things, please. Do you know what a prime candidate is? At Atlas, um, it's the best student. And what does that mean? It means they get a guaranteed job with a very good salary. Well, that's the idea anyway. But? Mostly they aren't up to it. What happens then? They get sacked. That's all for the moment, thank you. it all the way in, Tom, if you want to. <laughs> Excellent, Tom. Excuse me. Would someone care to tell me exactly what's going on here? Don't come any closer. That man needs a doctor. No, he doesn't. I don't need a doctor. I'm fine. Go away. What is this? A test. Of what? What does it look like? It's a threshold test. A pain threshold test. I thought uh, you were supposed to be good at working things out. Inspector Jenks. And so this would be for Atlas, would it? Kyle. You disappear now. It's not a good idea to talk to a police inspector like that. Do it to make you. It's OK, Tom. Mr Jenks won't be bothering us anymore. Don't make any rash commitments. Well, well. You really should take more care of your things, Ryan. Is your keys, Kyle? No. So that's threshold testing, is it? Sticking a skewer through your hand? I could just ask Ryan or Paul directly about this, but I think I'll bide my time. See what I can do with this key fob first. Bingo. Well, Ryan, 
What have you been up to? Be very interesting to see how he explains this one. Couple more questions, if that's okay. Now, why do you think Ryan might want to give Kate a check for five hundred pounds? I really no idea. Where did you find it? Just outside. You better ask him. You think Ryan was interested romantically in Kate? I know he has a weakness for blondes, but I didn't think it had gone so far as his offering them cash. Be back later on, if that's okay. Questions, please. Know anything about poppy pods? Come across anyone selling them or anything? Poppy pods? <laughs> well, don't tell anyone, Inspector. But I hear that you can make opium out of those. Why do you ask? Doesn't matter. Now. Tell me what a prime candidate is. You're learning a lot, aren't you, Inspector? <laughs> prime candidates are simply the best students, the ones with the most potential. And what benefits do they get from that? Well, they get the top job. Which is? Well, we have a deal with various multinationals. We train students to be exceptional, truly exceptional. And they get a wonderful top job. It seems a very simple deal. And how do you decide who the prime candidate is? Do you test students? No. Did you ever say ask Simon to test Kate, for instance? Oh, you've actually been speaking to Simon, haven't you? I really wouldn't trust anything that Simon Thompson says. You know, he spent the best part of two months trying to undermine Kate. No, 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 no. Now, Simon Thompson, it really isn't my place to speculate, but uh, if you're looking for motives, Inspector, uh, he certainly had a few motives. I, uh, more than I. A motive to kill her, do you mean? Now, that's very interesting, Inspector. Well, that's up to you to decide her. Huh? Would you like to explain what this is, please, Ryan? Five hundred pounds intended for Kate. It fell out of your car. At least I assume that's your car on the driveway at Brandon House. I suppose so. So why were you going to give Kate five hundred pounds, Ryan? It was just a little incentive. That's all. Just a little incentive. Not very little, Ryan. Five hundred pounds. She was a, a very good student. We we heard that she was leaving. You wanted to give her something, but you didn't. Well, obviously not. Are you sure there wasn't any other reason you might want to give her this personal reason? No. Well, I'd like to keep hold of this for a little while, if you don't mind. Well, don't consider it a bribe, will you, Inspector?
Aha. So, students aren't coerced or bribed in any way, except Kate. I'm not sure what you mean. You said you were going to give Kate the five hundred pounds as an incentive. That's coercion, isn't it? I really don't think you could call it coercion, Inspector. It was an incentive. That's all—a little encouragement. So, how often do you use incentives? Okay, incentive is probably the wrong word. The money was just to see how Kate would respond. It was part of her assessment. Assessment. We have to assess students as they progress. We we don't use conventional methods like sitting an exam or anything like that. People pay for this course per session. We have to know if they're committed or not. So you're assessing their progress and testing their commitment. Yes, we are. We have to. This is a business, not a charity. So Ryan's claiming the money was part of Kate's assessment, and did this assessment also involve threshold testing? I wonder. Or was the money for something else? Aha! Well, which one is it, Ryan? Do you test students or not? Well, some of them, yes. Including Kate. Yes. Why was she being tested? She was being tested because because we wanted to see if she was good enough to become prime candidate. Okay? So Kate was in the running to be prime candidate. Yes. And did you ask Simon to test her? Yes, I did. But I didn't ask him to do anything stupid. He knew it was against course rules. How far did you ask him to push her? I didn't ask him to push her. I asked him to test her. There's a huge difference. If Simon decided to give her too much caffeine or morphine or whatever, that's his responsibility. So if he did anything wrong, it was his own responsibility. He did it with his own mind and his own hand. We had nothing to do with it. Midnight, and still no suspect. Unless you count everyone I've interviewed, it's no surprise that Ryan wants to avoid any suggestion of being responsible for Kate's death. But I wonder if the man protests just a little too much. 